Hey guys, all right, so today I'm gonna to do a video on the ICOM 7300 and getting 150 watts out of the ICOM. Okay, so I know, um, actually, a lot of people just simply wanna get 100 watts out of their radios. I, I've seen a lot of people having issues with getting even the stated 100 watts that the radio is supposed to do out of the, out of the box. Um, so I'm gonna cover that. There's a few things I think that we need to do to these, these radios are kind of finicky, and um, so I'm going to cover some of the factors that could um, limit the radio from doing the full 100 watts, and then also the mods get even more power out of the radio. So I'm going to cover, there's factors like firmware, the voltage going to the radio, SWR uh, that the radio is seeing, and then the two mods that I know of is the service menu mod and the ALC mod. And then the last part is, you know, can the radio even handle doing 150 watts? So a lot of people I noticed in previous video are, you know, you're going to blow up the radio, you're going to damage the radio. So I'll cover that too. All right. So the first thing is, okay, the firmware. So the firmware, uh, okay, so just make sure you get the latest firmware. I actually, I didn't even think about this, but then I, I heard somebody over the air talking about this. Uh, they ha He had older firmware in his ICOM 7300, and he had uh, upgraded the firmware, and the, and the power increased. He got an, um, he just noticed it was putting out more power after doing the firmware upgrade. So I can't vouch for this. I bought my uh, ICOM 7300. It already had version, I think, 1.4.1 in it. So, I, you know, I didn't update it. So it's, uh, you know. Um, so I would check that, recommend check your firmware, and if it's older firmware, do a firmware upgrade. You know, it's probably best to upgrade the firmware anyways, regardless of this issue. Okay, the next thing is voltage going to the radio. I think this is obvious, but a lot of people don't realize this. So, uh, you know, if you have lower voltage going to the radio, it's going to do less power. So I actually tested this. I ran it from 11.5 to 15.5 volts, and you can see there the power output. Now, this is the radio. I did the both mods already, so this is, and this way, I forget which frequency it was, but where it was, it was doing 140 watts, and you'll see in my next slide uh, that, you know, it kind of depends on what frequency you're at, that, you know, the power changes a little bit, uh, depending on the frequency, the band you're on. Um, so, you can see the difference between 13.0 volts versus 15.0 volts you know you got 120 watts versus 140 watts so figure an unmodified radio might be doing let's say 80 watts or 90 and then if you get it you know feed it 15 volts it might do a full 100 watts so that's something to consider okay next thing uh the swr so i think you know most radios are you know they're not exactly going to put out the same power depending on the frequency you know different bands uh, put out a little different power. So I actually tested this going into a dummy load. I put it in RTTY mode to easily test the power. And so at 15 volts, these are the this is the output power you'll see I got. Um, you know, on uh, 160 meters, it did 140 with the tuner off and with the tuner on. What's interesting is in some bands, it actually did more power going into the dummy load, which already had a good SWR, about 1.1, 1.2, like for example, on the 11 meter band, 27.2 megahertz, it was doing 120 watts without the tuner with already good SWR, but with the tuner it did 140. So that's something to think about. I don't know why. And then the biggest difference was on 15 meters. It did 120 and then uh, without the tuner on, and then even though the SWR was good, and then it did 150 watts uh, with the tuner on. So. I'm not really sure. Maybe you guys can comment exactly what's up with that, but that's something to consider. I think maybe you just run the tuner all the time and just run the tuner. I think especially if you're running into an amplifier, by the way, because that's your input tune. So that's what the radio is seeing. So that's just something to consider. This is a, fa a factor, and this will. This is something you can do without even modifying the radio. It's just you know get the run the tuner, run your voltage around 15 volts. Those two things. I think alone, then the radio will do 100 watts. Okay, so those who want to go beyond 100 watts. <laughs> so there's a service menu mod. You guys might be familiar with it. I actually did a video on it. There's a short video, and a lot of people like watched it. Um, but um, you go into the service menu. You go to TXID, power, HF power, 100% setting, and you change the voltage to 4.901 volts. I forget where it... Um, I, I think I found it. Well, there's a video um, I did, but I think I forget where I found it. Um, but I, I, um, I posted a video and um, I, I'll put the video in the 
video description of this video for that video. So check for that in the description of this video in the notes. Okay, and the other thing is the ALC mod, which you guys might be more familiar with, but um, figure you could do both of these and then you get more power. Uh, total, more you know, between the two, you get like 140, 150 watts. Um, I noticed uh, with the uh, with this mod, um, I was doing about 125 watts. That's why I called it the 125 watts out of an ICOM 7300 video. <laughs> so this one, uh, it's a 3.3 microfarad tantalum capacitor. Um, it's uh, th there's a guy that has a PDF on it, really good. I sent, I got a link here. I'll put it in the link in the description of the video too. It, he did a really good job on that. So and then there's also someone else, not me, that did a YouTube video on it. Also, so those two things, those things you can do, the ALC mod, okay? All right, and the last part, my conclusion. Okay, so, you know, can the ICOM 7300 handle 150 watts? You know, the radio is a 100 watt radio and you're asking the thing to do, you know, I was getting 160 watts on some of the bands. So that's kind of a lot of power. Is that gonna burn out the radio? So I actually talked to a few people that run the radio like that all the time, which I don't even do, but they do, and they haven't burned out their radio. So up to you i say you know doing any of these modifications i'll say do at your own risk um so what's so what power transistors are in this radio that's how i looked it up got the data sheet and so it's a mits they are they are it's a pair of them it's a mitsubishi rd70 hvf 1c and they're rated around 70 actually 75 watts you'll see in the data sheet 75 watts typical um so and there's two of those so they're 75 watt transistors uh, I compare them, think of, say, in, you know, like they're equivalent to kind of like an MRF 454, which are 80 watt transistors. And in the CB world, that would be if you had a two MRF 454 amplifier, that's typically like a 250, a 250 watt uh, amplifier typically had those uh, pair of two, uh, 454s. So I, my conclusion is, yes, those transistors uh, should handle doing 150 watts. So, but... And I say here, also note, the difference between 100 and 150 watts is only 1.6, or sorry, 1.76 dB. So not even 2 dB, not S units, dB, which is about one third of one S unit. So why even bother? And you know what? You're probably right. But that's not what this video is. I'm not here to judge why people want to do it. I'm just here to provide information about it. <laughs> so do it, do as you wish. And uh, so hope you guys like the video. And if, and if there's anything I missed here or any other mods or, or suggestions and comments, please, please do, I mean, do put it in the comments um, about this. I, I'm, if there's just something I missed, let me know. Okay. Hope you guys like the video. Take care.